here I am, I'm Abigail and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today's video is something that I have wanted to film from like the very start of my channel but I never got around to it. I thought it'd be too much for me at that time and I think now is just the right time for me to close the video. I think the story is a good point to end it. So I'm going to be talking about epilepsy because that is something that I have and it's been a long journey of roller coaster of emotions and when I was going through the diagnosis stage of the epilepsy I cannot even begin to tell you how many epilepsy stories I watched of other people on YouTube and I've always wanted to film my own one of them because they helped me understand and realise that I wasn't alone and things like that so that's the main reason I'm filming this video is to help even one person who watches this who is can relate to this in some way or learn new information or even just get some understanding of what it is like. As you can probably tell by my channel I am a Christian and I believe in Jesus. I wanted to film this testimony involving God in it. There's a fair part of my story that has no hope and I was just a mess and ignoring God or whatever but there also is hope that I want to put into it and show people that God is there in all of it. If you have any questions while watching this video then please please feel free to message me or chat with me. I'll put my socials in the description and stuff because I believe that we go through stories, we experience things that when we share them and talk about them it can help other people around us. I will start off with explaining what type of seizures I have which will give you some context as to how we got there. I have oct- oh gosh I really can't say these words. The type of epilepsy I have is occipital lobe epilepsy and it affects the back part of my brain which controls the eyes I believe. Epilepsy basically means that your nerves in your brain send the wrong signals around the brain. Please, I encourage you to do your own research because I'm not an expert in this area at all. I have two types of seizures. The first one is convulsive seizures, which means I am unconscious, mainly on the floor, like shaking. And the second type, I cannot, I don't even know what to tell you what they're called. I have no idea. All I call them is like eye episodes because they're quite rare, which is why my story is rather complicated. So I don't know what to tell you about that, but they're the two type of seizures that I have. <laughs> so the story starts in 2010 when I was 10 years old and I fainted and an ambulance was called and da 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 da. I was fine. I didn't have a seizure or anything. And that was that. That was the first time I'd fainted, I think. And around that time, I also had these eye episodes, which at that moment was not seizures at all. It was just me losing my eyesight. I saw black and white dots and it would go up and down like a blind is how I saw it. And that would happen for like 30 seconds to a minute. And that was happening at worst nine times a day, but at least three times a day. That was pretty much happening every day from when I was 10 years old. One day I went to get my eyes tested because I have glasses and they were just doing the normal test, looking through my eyes and stuff. And they could see pressure like on my eyes. I don't know how it works, but they sent me to hospital. I went to Oxford hospital to have these MRI scans and all that stuff. And they found that I have optic eye gerusin, which basically just means that the nerves look different they're not connected properly to like my brain or something but they also discovered that I have large ventricles in my brain which doesn't match up to me or my body at all like they were saying all these things that I shouldn't be able to do and walk and loads of stuff like that it was crazy I truly believe that that was God's healing on my life because I was born prematurely so they think that that was related to that problem there. So once the doctors found out in Oxford Hospital that I had enlarged ventricles, they wanted to do this pressure test to see 
I don't know what it was to see how much pressure was in my brain I guess so they like legit drilled a hole in my skull which is, must still be there and put like all these wires in my brain to test the pressure there which all came back positive it was all great so they knew that my brain just looked like that but it didn't mean anything to me I was put on migraine medication and I don't know what it was called because it was a long time ago because I was having headaches and things like that. We fast forward to 2014, so I was 14 years old. Still having these eye things every day. I went to South Africa with my family for a month to work with my auntie with her charity there and also just to have a holiday. I had my first unconscious convulsive seizure so i was driven to the hospital where they put me in icu intensive care and i had another seizure there it wasn't as bad but i was unconscious um so they gave me an injection to stop me from having them the doctors did an mri scan they saw the pressure and large ventricles and things and they were freaking out about it they were planning to put a shunt in my brain to drain water and things like that but we knew that that didn't exist it was just looked like that but it wasn't actually in my brain my mum convinced them to not do an operation on me because by god's grace we knew and we had the evidence that i was okay so instead they put me on sodium valoprite which was, I can't remember the side effects it gave me, but I remember it was bad. That drug is banned in the UK, I believe, because of the side effects and things like that. So, I mean, it wasn't great. <laughs> because there was limited equipment in that hospital, they put me in an ambulance and drove me to another hospital to get a CAT scan, which was just a more detailed scan I think. I was really scared and I kept having nightmares and things like that. I remember seeing like a hand come in the nightmare and like taking all the bad stuff away and I know that that was like God's hand saying like do you know what I'm here I'm here with you you know because on that holiday I was getting baptized so I got baptized and then I had all this health stuff so it was just a very confusing time. They flew a doctor from England to South Africa to fly home with me and my family to take us to hospital in England but we got updated to first class so I mean it wasn't too bad. So when I got home we went to the hospital, got checked out, they the first thing they did was gradually take me off the medication that South Africa put me on and they put me on propanolol for my migraines and things like that because they didn't think it was epilepsy because apparently it's quite common for people to have at least one seizure in their life so they were like it's fine we'll put you on migraine medication see what happens but that didn't work so they took me off that and put me on to pyramate gave me really bad side effects and i hated the drug more than having the seizures i was like i just want <laughs> just want to be off it because the side effects I lost like so much weight and it was just absolutely messing with my mind and yeah it just wasn't good. So they took me off the medication and they did an EEG which means they like put loads of wires and stuff to your brain and loads of wires on your body and basically just test your eyes and stuff to see how you react. They just put loads of, like flashing lights and I got n positive, oh, what, you what, what was good? I got good results back so that I didn't react to anything which I also got told that that test is quite inaccurate and that people pass it even if they have epilepsy so basically that meant absolutely nothing and at this point remember that I'm still having the eye attacks like at least five times a day. I just wanted to pop in and say that I'm very aware that the story is negative right now but please stick around and wait until the end so you can hear the good news about it and that just shows that things do get better and persevering is really worth it and i also wanted to say about the medication that each medication works different for everyone else it reacts to your bodies differently so when i'm talking about the side effects don't take that personally because it might work really well for you and the main part of my journey has been trying and trying and trying again loads of different treatments until the right ones work. So there is hope to find the right one. We're in 2016, so I turned 16, so I wasn't able to be under the paediatricians, the children's doctors anymore. 
so I got referred to neurology which is like brain doctors which makes sense and he basically said that I don't need to be on any medication anymore because he diagnosed me with being lactose intolerant therefore that would stop my migraines from happening because that's all people thought it was and to be fair this worked with the sickness and things like that because we realized that was also a side effect of the medication with no appetite and sickness and da 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 but because I now wasn't on any medication I had another big convulsive seizure on Christmas Eve which is nice isn't it I have two seizures like in the same time so basically I have a seizure I wake up for like a minute and then go back straight into another one that seems shorter ambulance came went to the hospital did my vitals and stuff I was fine went home nothing crazy I had the first seizure and then apparently my family told me that I woke up and told them to take my socks off <laughs> and then I went back into having another seizure but obviously I don't remember that because I was still in a daze but I thought that was really funny. I got told so many times by the ambulance people and the A&E staff that they think it's epilepsy and I hadn't really believed that before you know like I was just told that it's normal for people to have seizures and I'm growing and that's why I'm having these dizzy spells and da 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 da. So this was the first time I was being told that I actually might have epilepsy. My major struggle through all of this is normally been the side effects of the medication because that is constant. One of the main side effects that's been consistent was concentration or the lack of concentration and memory and things like this. So I actually got special attention at school in exams and things like that. I got extra time and things called timeouts where I could say, yo, I'm struggling. I can't think about anything right now. I need 10 minutes out and then I'll carry on with my exam. So I had that, which was an absolute blessing. And also because obviously I couldn't be in the exam room, like the exam hall with all the other students in case I had a seizure and then interrupt all of them people. So instead I was with like six people to do exams all the time. I realise I haven't explained what happens when I have the seizures. So when I get like a 30 second warning of when I'm going to go unconscious because I have an eye attack first, and instead of my eyesight going back up, it just goes completely black. And then I get wave of heat. Oh, it's gross. So then I just feel really hot, really sick, dizzy, and I get pins and needles and then feel really faint and then have the seizure. So that's what happens and that's the warning that I get. So then in 2017, I had two more seizures, which was because I wasn't on any medication again. And I was walking my dog, on my own as you normally do walking a dog and I had I don't remember it fully because obviously I was unconscious but I had two more seizures conveniently in the middle of the road <laughs> I remember crossing the road like I remember stepping over the curb and then I woke up in the middle of the road so I must have carried on walking and then fallen over and I woke up with my dog sat next to me so obviously I wasn't holding on to her anymore and with like my arm leaning on my head which is crazy how that happened because I must have fallen at such an impact that I so could have easily like really hurt myself with my head or something but I thought I'd just fallen over it didn't even cross my mind so I just walked home but it's crazy how the only injury I had was my knee like I had scrapes and like abrasion and wounds and stuff all over my body but nothing serious I mean my knee was it was gross like really gross but I mean it it was fine I had physio and things and then it was all right after that I went to the eye department and they checked out my eyes and everything to see if that was causing these episodes rather than my brain and my nerves and things but they said my eyes are fine apart from my eyesight and the optic eye trues and which has no effect on anything. So they were also saying how they believe that it's epilepsy and nothing to do with that. Then I, who has been waiting for some answers for like literally seven years, I got attached to the diagnosis of epilepsy because there had been three different departments now, professionals, whatever, who had told me that. And after seven years of not really being listened to or understood or just kind of felt pushed to the side now being told that I have epilepsy was 
a good and exciting thing for me to have. And because now this had happened out in public and I felt unsafe and I just felt so much like fear, but I was also obsessed and happy that I had the di diagnosis. It was just a very confusing time for me. I ordered a, a wristband that you can get that like says your name and that you have epilepsy on it and a phone number to call. So I ordered one of them, I downloaded every app ever, I, like I said before, I watched every YouTube video to ever exist about epilepsy because that kind of brought me comfort knowing that I wasn't alone but also kind of made me worse in a way because I was just completely obsessive over it and that's all I would think about. So this is when I was really scared to go out anywhere and do anything in case anything happened again and so I would rather stay at home which then made me feel isolated but that's because I was the one distancing myself from everyone else. So this went on for a couple of months and I had my neurology appointment at the hospital and I was ready for this appointment for this to be the one like this was the one that mattered this was when this guy was going to say I have epilepsy let's get full-on treatment going. Oh I was wrong! So he sat me down and told me that he doesn't believe I have epilepsy because he hasn't got video evidence of that happening even though he has all of these other accounts of things that have happened. I was absolutely crushed. That led me to losing my trust in doctors and I just didn't know who to believe anymore. Like again that just added to more of my confusion. And then I went through this weird process of like letting go of the epilepsy diagnosis which I literally like clung on to because that was the only hope I had was I hope I have epilepsy therefore I can have the treatment and people will actually start believing me but now I'd lost that hope so I just kind of had nothing anymore which then spiralled the fear again and the unknownness of everything was just too much. I started getting panic attacks and they were then getting worse. I had a doctor's appointment booked with my GP because the doctor who didn't believe that I had epilepsy weirdly referred me to the National Centre of Excellence for epilepsy. So like the highest place for epilepsy he referred me to even though he didn't think I had epilepsy. Which doesn't make sense but I'll receive it. So we had an appointment with my doctor to talk about the practicalities of that and the waiting list and things. And she also diagnosed me with severe anxiety and panic attacks which led to the talking of counselling and stuff but I realised I was looking through and I realised I haven't done a video about anxiety so if you want me to do a video about that as well then let me know. I wasn't telling any of my friends about things like this so I was just feeling very lonely and keeping it all to myself which is not healthy is what I have learned so please talk about these things with the people around you. And during all of this anxiety season I was ignoring God I guess because I couldn't trust anyone, I couldn't trust myself and therefore how could I trust God? That was kind of my mindset I think. And I was just angry at everyone and it was just a weird time. But looking back I can see where God was in all of it even though I was choosing to be far away from him. He was still so close to me and I honestly like each night I could feel his presence but without knowing it was him like I think in the back of my mind I knew it was him but like I honestly felt this like hug every night before I went to bed I felt this hug and now I know it was from Jesus which is really precious so at this point the epilepsy hospital was the only thing I had to hold on to this was the last resort of me getting any help because I was still having these eye episodes <laughs> so and obviously the other seizures as well so I needed something but no one knew what to do with me because it was rare for this to still be happening. In 2018 I did this thing called a discipleship training school with youth with a mission but my appointment for the Chalfont Centre it was appointed to be in the first week of this school happening and I was not happy about that at all but it was the only option I had and I'd rather have it than not have it at all but now looking back it was 
God's perfect timing because I think being in that environment, that Christian community, like close community environment was exactly where I needed to be when I was going through all of this to like have a recovery of it, I guess. So I went to this appointment at the Chalfont Centre and I can't tell you how lovely everybody was there. I honestly love that place so much. And my doctor, she listened to me, she understood me because everyone there is experts in epilepsy. Like she was saying how she's had a couple of patients like me before. It is rare, but she's seen it happen. And then I got officially diagnosed with epilepsy in September, 2018. <laughs> and this doctor, she put me on medication which she said is the safest medication for people with epilepsy, like long-term wise, it's safe in like pregnancies and things like that. And it's called Lamotrigine. And this actually is the medication I'm still on today, which is a good sign. I remember whenever someone asked what my prayer requests were, every single time I would say, pray against the side effects of this medication. I need this medication to work because I'm so over trying and trying and trying again, like I just need this to be the one. And Jesus answered my prayers because two years later, I'm still on this medication with no side effects. On this school, God showed me a lot of things about my health journey. Well, actually the lack of health. I learned that I needed to surrender my health to him because I was clinging on to my glasses and I was clinging on to the epilepsy because it was safe I guess that's all I'd ever known that's all I've ever experienced before so the thought of having people praying for me and healing prayer and then that taken away from me it was again the unknown of what is that going to look like because I wasn't used to being independent I wasn't used to doing all these things so that was very scary so I had to surrender that and accept and proper belief for healing when people would actually pray for healing for me rather than secretly praying against the healing that people are praying for which is it sounds crazy but it's so real that you don't want to be healed so then I started to switch my priorities in my brain from always looking at epilepsy always looking at myself with oh I'm Abigail with epilepsy rather than I'm Abigail you know what I mean I started thanking Jesus for my healing even though I was still having seizures and things like that you know I was just believing for and speaking truth over myself rather than thinking all these negative things all the time in my mind and this is a season where God broke my anxiety and broke the fear in my life so it was just it was a an amazing year of freedom for me and what was an absolute miracle was that the lamotrigine is the only medication that i've been on that has controlled my eye attacks so for literally like eight years on all the medication i've been on it had not touched the eye ones at all but this medication it has so on dts the eye attacks were gradually decreasing, still having them, but just not as often as nine times a day. So I was able to do the activities that my friends were doing, but it was also a good time of learning and understanding my limits and being okay with that and adapting to the situations around me. And everyone was just so loving and it was just such an amazing team that people would look for things for me to do rather than just me standing on the side helpless you know because I do have limitations there's things I can't do such as driving or getting up and getting down too quickly or mass exercise you know what I mean there is limitation that's just how it's always going to be it's a lifelong condition it is what it is but I was learning how to live with that. In 2019, as my school finished, the week after graduation, I went back to the Chalfont Centre for a five-day inpatient stay. And this is where they did lots of tests on me to diagnose what actual epilepsy I had and trying to understand that more. So I had a 
video telemetry recording, which was basically meaning the whole five days I was locked in a room with cameras on me the whole time and like wired up to machines and things like that so they could record everything and like they could see me having seizures and record what my brain was doing at that time and they also gave me psychology tests and memory tests and things to see how i was doing in that area as well i thought i would really struggle in that time but i actually weirdly okay i didn't enjoy it but i it i tolerated it because it was just me mainly my mum visited me a lot but it was mainly just me and the doctors because i was literally stuck in a room so i was just worshipping reading my bible it was nice not being sat there the whole time thinking about my health even though i was in a hospital constantly reminded of my health like does that make sense i don't know it was just refreshing being in that setting trust in the doctors and being okay with being tested because i could now only see jesus a couple of months later in my follow-up appointment that's when she told me that i have optical lobe epilepsy which is the back of the brain that is not connected properly and what i loved about being in there for the five day inpatient and also just being with my doctor on appointments is that they are so curious about what I'm doing because you have to tell them things so they can understand your limitations and circumstances and stuff that I just got to talk so much about the discipleship training school and what God did in my life and there was like volunteer visitors who would come and sit with you and you just got to tell them all these testimonies oh it was just so good so then this doctor referred me to neurology hospital in london and this is where they did loads of eye tests on me again just to double check it wasn't anything to do with my eyes it was such a funny appointment because the lady was so shocked as to how bad my eyesight is because i'm long-sighted and she was literally just running around everywhere getting all these doctors to come in and look at my scans and to look at how thick my glasses are and things like that i got told something that was crazy to me because one of the head doctors there who she had called in to have a look at my eyes he said that if i didn't get glasses when i did and i was one years old because that's not normal for a child that young to get glasses he said that I would be like fully blind right now if I hadn't got glasses that early on, which blew my mind because that that must have been a God thing again of the healing. So now we're in 2020 and things have changed so much. I'm still on the Lamotra gym medication and no side effects still. I'm having my eye attacks like not even once a month like once every two or three months which is crazy from nine times a day but it's also different it's all i feel now is like burning behind my eyes rather than actually losing my eyesight and now my doctor is also saying that once i have completely nothing which is going to be soon as i gradually increase my medication even more that looking to drive is on the horizon even though it's not something that i I've ever had a burning passion to drive which I also think is God's kindness to me because normally when all my friends were driving and doing their tests and everything they were so excited and I easily could have been sad about not being able to do that because of the epilepsy but instead I just I don't think I would have well I wouldn't have I wouldn't have chosen to drive anyway so I'm glad that I didn't have that desire but now it's an option which is a testimony of saying how the treatment is going well and that they're being controlled now and i'm still very much thanking jesus for my healing because i don't think healing always has to be instantly through prayers in like a massive moment you know like i totally believe i'm being healed on a journey which gives me a testimony that can heal other people in their journeys so I'm still constantly thanking Jesus for my healing through medical treatment and hospitals and doctors because he gave these people wisdom and he put these people in my life and has taught me so many things through this journey. 
And I definitely look at the world now through a lens of hope that he can truly turn anything into good. So if any of you guys have epilepsy or are going through that stage, then please talk to me because I love connecting with you guys because we have something in common and we can chat and share stories with each other and just to encourage each other. So if you have any relations to that, then please let me know and we can get connected. And I will have linked down below any websites that I find that I think are helpful, um, any groups or anything, if you want to get some merch to support the charity and things like that, then yeah i'll try and link it in the description but thank you so much for watching this video it's probably really long so if you're still here you're amazing i'll see you next time i hope you have a great day Mwah.